Carrie and Egon, uh, great to have our distinguished APTN panel back. Uh, Carrie, let's start with you and the news this week that Brenda Lucky is stepping down as commissioner of the RCMP. What do you make of that? I really think it was a smart move on her part. The news coming out is not positive, and I think she knew that there was no alternative. There was no way out of this. And for her to take the cap, I, I see it as a sign of accountability. She's taking accountability for her lack of actions. And so she's she's taking her um, medicine and she's like, I'm stepping down. And she's giving up a position that she has built her whole entire life and career around. And so it was expected. Nigan, what's your take on uh, the RCMP commissioner stepping down? Uh, absolutely. I mean, it's time. I mean, this is typical to the RCMP. Uh, they sort of uh, use a, uh, a commissioner, chew her up, spit her out, or in this case, her first ever female RCMP head in history. Um, but let's let's give Brenda Lucky uh, some credit where credit's due here. Uh, Brenda Lucky, if we think back to when uh, she started in the position, the RCMP was in the midst of two class action scandals uh, for har harassment and sexual abuse of women officers and civilian members within this within the service, and so certainly Brenda Lucky has handled that issue, and and particularly we we don't hear as much within the service itself as what was uh, clearly a very toxic culture. And uh, that's what she vowed to do uh, when she was appointed in 2018. That's what she vowed to promise to do. And, and that there, she herself had said that there was a deeply ingrained problem within the RCMP. The problem, of course, is that since then, and almost with the beginning of the pandemic, things really went off the rails for Brenda Lucky. Uh, there was a point in which she couldn't define systemic racism, but then later said it was within the RCMP. Of course, there's all the debacle involving whether the Emergencies Act was appropriate uh, during the Ottawa occupation. And then, of course, you know, what where was the RCMP in all of that? They were quite absent. And then, of course, uh, some of the other major scandals involving the RCMP out on the East Coast in terms of shootings, in terms of Saskatchewan, uh, where was the use of the RCMP and the intervention within the shootings in James Smith Cree Nation. And, and you know, the, the absolutely egregious situations involving officers and Indigenous communities throughout the country. I mean, the fact is that the RCMP really hasn't changed its outward looking uh, relationship with communities, particularly with Indigenous communities. Uh, and so Brenda Lucky uh, did not do her job in that regard. She did her job perhaps dealing with some of the internal work within the RCMP, but during externally, it's the same old RCMP that continues to uh, um, produce more harm or as much harm as any good that they produce. Uh, Carrie, uh, Negan's uh, listing off a number of things there. Uh, of course, uh, many things going on under Lucky's uh, time at the helm here, including uh, recently this explosive report from the Civilian Complaints Commission that found RCMP officers in Prince George may have engaged with underage Indigenous sex workers. Uh, what's your, what are your thoughts on that and what should happen there? I think they know the names of the officers who perpetuated these crimes against these young women, and there's no reason why they shouldn't be held accountable. They they know that they did wrong. This report was written. Why not? You know, they we have people calling on the federal government to prosecute those who were involved in residential schools. Why aren't they being charged? We um, there has been measures taken to prosecute those who were involved in the Holocaust, and we have present day people who are perpetuating crimes on vulnerable people, and yet they're still allowed to walk freely without any consequences i think prosecuting them and that will go a long way in showing that the rcmp actually do care to to protect indigenous people uh, Nigan, many people have laid the blame of the rcmp's relationship with indigenous peoples at lucky's feet uh, do you think that's fair and do you think things will change uh, now that we're going to see a change in commissioner uh I'd like to be optimistic. You know, as someone who, uh, you know, to be full disclosure, I've been asked by the RCMP to act on their National Advisory Board. 
Um, I've rejected that uh, that request. Um, it it is certainly I think there is intention and, and there's an awareness within the RCMP even at the higher echelons that the relationships between the police officers, uh, RCMP, and Indigenous communities are in so many ways toxic, but they're also often set up to fail. I mean, they aren't resourced appropriately, and oftentimes it takes days for an officer, when called, to come to a community. Uh, so in some cases, some communities have a very acrimonious and divisive relationship with the RCMP. So it's kind of toxic from the beginning. But at the same time, you hear what Carrie's talking about, which is the egregious situation of officers and their conduct. Um, I think that there needs to be a massive overhaul in the way that the culture of the RCMP, uh, how they recruit, how do they get officers from the very first days, and then particularly that that uh, we have the issue, situation of officers who are forced to go into situations where they're frankly completely inept. They, can, they don't understand colonialism. They don't understand the way the Indian Act works. And then what they're forced to do is to deal with things in a very reactive way and not a proactive way. And so the RCMP has to overhaul its training methods from the ground up. And then it also has to make sure that officers are accountable when there's inc incidents like this. Kerry Negon, we'll have to leave it there, but it's great to see you both. Appreciate you taking some time for us. Yeah, miigwech, thanks.